right, so I'm going to make one of my favorite little bread recipes. I got this awesome Danish whisk. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt to clean, but it makes a bread dough like no one's business. Of course, we're going to be using whole wheat flour. This is like the King Arthur whole wheat flour. A little bit of uh, active dry yeast and some hot water. I'm actually going to get that going right now. The water should be between 110 and 115, so I use this candy thermometer. And while we get the water going nice and heated up, we are going to start with the dry ingredients. Three cups of flour. Like I said, I am using the whole wheat flour. So this is a no need recipe. It's like a peasant bread, if you will. It just has a long proofing time. About eight to 16 hours, I believe. So three cups, we'll give it a nice stir with the Danish whisk. All right. One teaspoon of dry active yeast. Bada bing, bada boom. And then sea salt. Apologies for the water running in the background, but we got to get our water heated up. All right, give this a nice little mix. Like I said, it's a long rise time, um, but I actually split that rise time up by transferring it from this bowl after a few hours to a loaf pan. Because like I said, I want it to resemble like something I could make like sandwiches out of and whatnot, things you do on a weekday. Let's check the water, one second. I don't know if you could see that, but it's right in between the 120 and 110 mark, so I think we're good. We only need a cup and a half, so I'm gonna pour a little of this out. And in it goes. I actually like to do a little bit at a time. So, and you'll see how great this spatula, I'm sorry, this, what is it? It's a, a whisk, yeah. You'll see how great this whisk works. Of course, it's slipping and sliding all over the place. Let me get a grip on it. And if it is a little dry, the dough, I will add just a touch more water. It probably is because I didn't sift the flour, maybe? I don't know. There was probably more flour than what was in the recipe. But yeah, look, see how it's all coming together here? Once it gets into a ball, we're going to try to remove any excess dough because like I said it's a pain in the butt to clean a little bit but it is such a great uh, whisk. There we go and all we need to do now is saran wrap it and let it sit for like I said 8 to 16 hours but I try to catch it before the 12 hour mark. I believe it's like 7 o'clock now so going to probably just give it a couple hours here on the countertop in this bowl and then I will transfer it to my loaf pan. All right this is what it looks like at around seven o'clock. We'll check on it in a little bit. All right, it's about 10.30, so it's been seven to eight, eight to nine, nine to 10, three and a half hours. And you can see it's nice and juicy and thick. I just wanna bow, bow, <laughs> but I won't. 
Let's not try to knock any of that air out, but we do need to transfer it into a bundt pan. I'm sorry, not a bundt pan, but a loaf pan. Let's do it. Okay, we got our baking sprayed oil down loaf pan here. I've done it without doing so and it has stuck. So I don't play any games, spray it on down. Bring out the flour to help along. And what I'm going to do is just pull back and then sprinkle some flour underneath just so it pulls up and stays up without being too sticky. almost like pre-shape it and transfer it into our pan here see give it a little shimmy shake and now we are going to use the saran wrap from earlier and let this rise for the rest of the duration of the night. So I didn't really think this through. I started at 7 p.m., meaning 12 hours will be me baking this at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. I might wait until eight or nine. It's pushing it, like I said. I like to get it close to the 12 hour mark as possible, but it's not the end of the world if I don't. So if I'm up at seven, I'll do it. If not, eight, nine is gonna be fine. So, me and the dance girls are road tripping up to Boston for New Year's Eve, and I'm making two sets of cookies. One for the hostess and the host, and one for the car ride to and from, so to exclusively for my dance girls and I. This one is for the car ride. This is my rendition of chewy oatmeal chocolate chip cookies, and the girls, they love, they love. So what I have here is um, one and a half cups of light brown sugar, two eggs, one cup of softened butter, a cup of chocolate chip. I do semi-sweet. There is actually a mix of dark chocolate, milk chocolate, and semi-sweet in there. And I took a little bit of liberties with that uh, one cup. It's probably about a one cup and a fourth. This is a one cup and a fourth of flour, speaking of. And we also have two teaspoons of vanilla, a half teaspoon of baking soda, and one teaspoon of salt. And this is salted butter, by the way. I like my cookies salty because they're sweet with the chocolate and the sugar. I want the salt to balance it out. We also have three cups of quick oats. So first things first, we are gonna take our flour, our salt, and our baking soda, and we are going to sift, sift, sift. It's always important for cookies to get sifted, all the dry ingredients. All right, we're gonna put that aside and cream the butter and the sugar. Two sticks, one cup of butter. The reason why my girlies love these cookies so much <laughs> and why I do too. Yes, get that delicious goodness in there. Sugar in. The way I divert from most cookie recipes is I only use brown sugar. It calls for a cup and a half of one and a half cup of the other, I do all brown sugar, FYI. Now this is just saying to cream until smooth. Okay, get in and around with the spatula. Make sure it's all getting incorporated. Lock it in place and let's go. Ta-da! 
touch on high just for effect. Once again, I want to scrape, scrape down the bowl because now we're going to incorporate the eggs in one at a time and then we are going to follow that with the vanilla extract. Why am I talking like this? <laughs> I do not know. Listen, I get crazy when I make cookies. And in the presence of all this butter and sugar, my God, today. What do you expect of me? One egg at a time. Bloop. Make sure it's well incorporated. And another scrape down for good measure. These are some damn good cookies, let me tell you. The problem is my girlies expect to get handed two cookies every time I see them. They're like, where are my cookies? I'm like, hello, today I am the gift. All right, I'm gonna put it on low and I'm gonna mix in our flour mixer, mixture. wanted to see that before we added our oatmeal which is next in look at the swirlage I mean it's gorgeous it is gorgeous I am making such a mess in the kitchen today All right, how we doing how we doing over here why am I being like this <laughs> Welcome to my life in the kitchen. And okay, what this is, it's the little thing that's like this, you know? But it's been like loose for years and I just have not fixed it yet. Otherwise, these KitchenAid stand mixers last forever. I got this one on QVC Easy Pay, baby. Yes. All right, I don't know why I'm cleaning that off. I'm going to mix in my chocolate chips next. I have like this OCD need to scrape down the bowl. Okay, in with the chocolate. Look at that dough, baby. So basically I'm going to freeze these. You know what, I'm probably going to uh, make one or two for me tonight, but you know, the baker does need to try it just to make absolutely sure everything is okay before I give them away. Look at that, that's gorgeous. Next step, we are going to scoop them out and then I'm gonna freeze them. 
All right, you guys will be so proud of me. Not only did I get all this done so far, but I did the dishes. What's up? <laughs> Little pack and pat on the back for me. Thank you very much. So uh, I'm going in with this one tablespoon scoop and I'm like doing a little double ice cream scoop over here. Boom. See, I think that the original recipe wants you to do it like boop, that big, but no, 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 no. I like them bigger than that, baby. Boom. So these go into a 325 degree oven. If you were gonna bake them, like at this point, it would be 12 minutes uh, from frozen. You'd probably add on a few more minutes to that. Uh, you would also spread them apart on the pan here, obviously. I got 25 cookies. Well, 24 cookies and a wah, wah, wah. This guy right here, he's a little bit of a run to the pack, but that's 25 cookies all together out of that batch. Not bad, right? I'm going to freeze these guys. And like I said, pop a couple into the oven tonight and I will circle back with you. Here they are in all their glory. As promised. Mmm, it smells so buttery. Smells buttery, tastes buttery. It's got that oaty, beautiful texture of like soft and chewy mixed with like the top where it's the oats that have crunched over. It's just, it's just good. I keep looking over here, but you need to look over here. Mm. Beautiful. All right, here we are with the loaf at 9 a.m. the next morning. And here it is, fresh out the oven. <laughs> now I told you it wasn't gonna rise much once it got into the oven. The rising all happens in the proof time. But yes, yes, yes. Let's just pop this right out. Oh, gorgeous. Touchable, yes. Look at that. Gorgeous. Hear that? It sounds nice and hollow. Beautiful. Now we're going to let this rest here for a bit, and then I'm going to cut it up. All right, let's cut this bad boy up. So you would normally think to just cut it like this, but look how small your little sandwich is gonna be. Uh-uh, nope. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it in half and then slice it horizontally. And then it's gonna give us like a normal size of, a, you know, a bread slice, right? Just making sure I'm about even here. Slice it on through, look at that crumb, yes. And then take it from the top and slice down. Usually I get like four or five slices per cube here. So we can like five today. So that's 10 slices in total, five sandwiches and honestly that's enough for me and the recipe is so easy you can replicate it as many times as you need for as much bread as you need for the week this is homemade bread after all so you're gonna get slices that look like this not a big deal to me not a big deal whatsoever we made this homemade and we want it to look homemade, right? The money shot, baby, yes. Here we go. Mm. Mm. 
What can I say? That's some good bread. Perfect amount of salt. You don't need too much butter. Just gives it that essence of flavor that we're looking for. The bread stands on its own. Mm. And I like the heel. I've always liked the heel. I've like never been the one to have mommy cut off the crust for me. So, whoop. Mm. Storage, how do you do it? Since this is a peasant bread, we made it handmade. There's no per preservatives and all that fun stuff. This is gonna go bad within a few days. <laughs> so, because I am one person, I don't eat it in a few days. So what I will do is I will put it in my handy dandy freezer bag and I will freeze it. First, let it totally come to room temperature and pop this bad boy into the freezer. And I just take them out as I need them. Pop them into my air fryer, bada bing, bada boom, we good to go. And I would say it's safe to assume that the bread will last in the freezer for, I don't know, a week or two or three. Y'all see all these walnuts back here? <laughs> my friend keeps giving me walnuts. Uh, I'm gonna have to make some walnut milk or something, I don't know. If you have any suggestions for me, let me know down in the comments. All right, no, this is not a mistake. This is not a glitch. <laughs> this is the second cookie recipe that I'm making as a host and hostess gift for my New Year's Eve party. Um, basic tenets of a cookie recipe, a chocolate chip cookie recipe. Uh, the one before was an oatmeal chocolate chip cookie recipe. This is a brown butter chocolate chip cookie recipe. And although it may not look brown, bada bing, bada boom, there we go. Uh, what I did was I uh, put two sticks of butter on the stove top and uh, basically brought it to a boil, let all the milk fats brown up, threw it into the refrigerator to solidify. Now it's back on the countertop, coming to room temperature so that we can cream it in with the brown sugar, which is two cups. We have three cups of all-purpose flour, two cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips, plus a little bit more. As you know, I do, I'm heavy-handed with the chocolate chips, two eggs, two teaspoons of vanilla, a half teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of baking soda. The first step is sifting the flour and the salt. We are omitting the baking soda at this point because there is another step where we're gonna add that to two teaspoons of hot water. I'm gonna confirm that. Now we are going to cream all that brown buttery goodness with the brown sugar. sugar in. Oh, it smells so nutty and buttery. I love it. All right, I'm going to cream this. You saw the process before. You know what's up. Eat one egg in at a time. Now the other. And in with the vanilla. Give it a good scrape down. And on we go. Two teaspoons of hot water. Mix it into the baking soda, make it into a little bit of a slurry, and in we go. In with our flour. I'm going to go a little out of time with this because there's so much of it. As it comes together, more in. do. 
You gotta give a scrape down, make sure it's all incorporated. Adding in our chocolate chips. Would you just look at this dough? It smells like caramel. The brown butter is everything. It really is. Again, y'all gonna be proud of me. I did the dishes and now I'm scooping all this out. This dough is luscious. I mean, I, I was just thinking to myself before turning on the camera, like this dough is a pleasure to work with. <laughs> I don't know how to say it uh, other than it's just a pleasure. It's delicious. I've been having a little, you know, sneaky taste here and there, even though you're not supposed to. The FDA does not allow for that, but I do. I take the risk and it was amazing. I'm like, people are going to flip over this. So these go into the freezer in a Ziploc. And then um, I will, like I said, uh, the first time around, I'm going to bake one or two for me to try on camera. So we'll get the instant gratification that I know you're looking for. You and me both, baby. You and me both. So stay tuned. All right. I have 28 cookies here. Plus this, I don't know, maybe like three more in here. I'm going to freeze these ones and I'm going to bake these ones right off. And we're going to taste it on cam. Okay, these are going into a preheated oven at 350 degrees for about 10 minutes. Oh, and if you're baking right from frozen, you might want to add on a few minutes uh, extra if you're doing it right from frozen, or you might want to thaw it out before and then follow the normal instructions. All right, they are out and proud. They smell so good. If you like butter, you've got to try this recipe. And look at this. Look how beautiful that bottom is all right this is my first time trying them with the brown butter so uh this is the reaction video Wow. Now that is a cookie. I love a good cookie base. My favorite cookie is a chocolate chip cookie. And I like it because it's simple. It's the cookie base and the chocolate chips, right? And so like, if you look at this piece here where there's no chocolate, it's pretty much my favorite part of a cookie. And this hits. If you are a cookie base cookie lover, as I am, I, yeah, try this. Mm. It's not too sweet. The entire, the entirety of a cookie is not too sweet. It's got a lot of chocolate in it. It's got that buttery base. And it's not like, it doesn't like punch you in the face like with like the way that the butter itself smells. It's just got like this really complex depth of flavor that runs throughout the cookie. It kind of gives it integrity, you know what I'm saying? And with a classic cookie such as chocolate chip, you gotta have integrity, especially if you're giving it as a hostess gift, so. Bon appétit. And that's a wrap for 2023 in terms of baking, that is. Still got a road trip to Boston, but uh, my baking's done for the year. I hope you enjoyed this uh, Bake With Me 2023 edition where we made brown butter chocolate chip cookies, chocolate chip oatmeal cookies, and weeknight bread. Like, comment, share, subscribe, do all the things, and um, I'll see you next year. Bye.